Hello and welcome to the Build With Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a Lego set and to hang out with all of you. I'm throwing the Bear Cave, the Lego, the site, and the Tier 2 Blue Emote in the chat. If you are currently a subscriber, you can reply with those emotes. If you are not currently a subscriber, you can just say hi or use other people's emotes or... You can just be a lurker and not say anything. Arctic Sloth is here. Arrestafan is here, throwing in that blue emote. Uh, Ghost Valve is here. Lashbrook is here. We got a great crew already. Welcome, everybody, to the stream. It's a Thursday night. And you know what that means. It means I had to get Amazon Prime working on uh, Prime Video, I should say, working on my parents' television so my dad can watch Thursday Night Football, which is apparently just on Amazon Prime this season. So uh, I had to work that out. I had to go in, maybe in local markets it's working, but other people have to watch it. I don't know exactly, but uh, if you if you uh, didn't hear me explain all this, I had to um, update the TV, which didn't work at first. So I had to side load and update the TV using USB, which is fun. Uh, then update the hub, the smart hub, which is where all the apps live. Then update the Prime app. And then log in with my credentials. After doing all of that um, uh, before, I now... Oh, and also finding a network uh, cable, an Ethernet cable, which I have some of, but I don't have a lot of extras. So I went and found that and then got all that plugged in. And my dad, dad's watching that. There's a bit of a... Um, uh, there was a little bit of a period where it looked awful um, as it was streaming, but then apparently got better. And my hope is that it didn't uh, deteriorate in quality... Uh, the minute that I went live here on the stream, that's my big hope is that it doesn't look awful for the two hours that I will be model or Lego building, I should say. Um, and that he didn't just have like 40 minutes of good quality and then whatever. Hey, I'm John. Welcome. So I hope my dad's going to enjoy watching the game. There is an alternative to this, which is to use uh, a different TV that has the app that is has a wireless signal already and doesn't need um that doesn't that we have another tv in the house um uh that doesn't uh require uh, a network adapter and might run better um because we don't have like a roku or anything or an apple tv or anything like that i have uh, a chromecast so i guess i could set up my mom's laptop no, yeah, set up my laptop, have Amazon Prime playing it in a Chrome uh, uh, browser, and then Chromecast that to a TV using my uh, Chromecast. I guess I could do that if all else fails. I bet that would look even worse. I'd probably plug in my mom's laptop to the network instead of it being on wireless and all that. Uh, Lord Crashes says, hey, Pat. I say, hey, back to you, Lord Crashes. Then. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Norris fan says, or he starts seeing Lego. Oh, I hope I didn't cross the streams and my dad is just watching this stream. That would be weird in a way that I would be unprepared for. It would be surprising if suddenly that was what was happening. Uh, so tonight's agenda. We're finishing the fight. I got this camper van, this Lego camper van that is just ginormous. Oh, you can see my light there. Hey, there's my light. Uh, oh, John wants me to dance, so I will I'll hit the dance button right now. Uh, here we go. So while I play some this music here and we get into it, yeah, um, we're going to talk about uh, some announcements. It's good dance. Yeah, I like it. We're going to talk about some uh, uh, press events, the uh, state of play from Sony, uh, Nintendo's Direct. Uh, there was an Ubisoft thing that I kind of already talked about, no, so I won't talk about that. Um, a lot of Like a Dragon Yakuza games were announced. Um, and then also, uh, there's some TGS stuff that I don't have anything about because I haven't been paying attention to TGS other than all of the Like a Dragon Yakuza games being announced. Um, uh, a couple quick hits, some wrestle talk. We're going to talk about um, all of the various places that had layoffs this week. And by this week, I mean yesterday and today. Uh, we hope Assassin's Creed can keep us afloat for a few more years. Yeah, Ubisoft. Uh, hey, we were, we were experimenting with NFTs. We did them. We were just uh, seeing what happened and people misunderstood. 
Um, I'll always call them Yakuza games, whatever they, they title it. Well, Arctic Sloth, I mean, there were a bunch of people that just called them like a dragon games because that's what they are. Uh, uh, Sega of America decided that Yakuza would sell better than like a dragon, which maybe it would. I definitely think it makes sense to not call the the one that's about samurais in the past, not calling that Yakuza. That makes a lot of fucking sense. Um, but also distancing from that name is probably for the best. But if you want to call them the Yakuza, Yakuza 8 instead of Like a Dragon 8, you can do that. Uh, they bridged the gap with Yakuza Like a Dragon, which was the seventh one. And I think that's fucking reasonable. Um, anyway, yeah, we are going to talk about some... Um, some uh, uh, layoffs in the game press industry, which sucks. And um, we'll talk about uh, some uh, video game stuff in general. We're playing all that. And the second hour, of course, talking about some anime. Uh, I will be talking about an ongoing show that I'm watching. And then I, because uh, I've dropped my other thursday shows to talk about i will talk about two shows that i have been watching on my own and not weekly and i'll give my thoughts on those two shows the yaku dragon series yes like a yakuza um uh yaku dragon mint oh yes the judgment games as well honestly that's the thing we should be talking about how it we got a game called judgment instead of judge eye uh which is judge's eye way better what is it? Yeah. That's a... Anyway, we got we got a, a name that sounds good. I'm going to retweet my tweet. Um, uh, and then we're going to get into it. Uh, also, um, if you have... If you want to get something... Uh, if you don't mind using Fanatical, Yakuza Zero right now is $4.19 uh, for Steam, a Steam code on Fanatical. Uh, if you want to save a bunch of money... On a very fucking good video game. Uh, you could do that. Um, for PC. Uh, Judge Eyes was an excellent title. Yes. Just Souls Born, the whole thing. There you go. Uh, Alright, we're going to go to the overhead here. As you can see, we got our big friend here. Now, we have built all of this except for the front right here and the roof. And we're going to start on the roof. Uh, of course, we got a bunch of things that open and move around and fold in and the bed fold. this thing folds out to make it a bed and this console open you know, pop the pop this up here if you got to do work underneath, which is nice. That they include that all kinds of stuff doors open, obviously whole lot of cool shit going on in this thing. Uh, I realize now that uh, there's a thing in here that's supposed to be like it's not, you know, like. Oh, the little closet has like a fun thing. You can see it from the road, which is nice. There's a lot of touches in here. I really appreciate it. Of course, there is uh, a lava lamp in there, which is very fun. That's a nice addition to it. And yeah, uh, so we're going to put this aside for a little bit here because it's just going to be in the way of working on our roof. So we can get here over here. But yeah, we're going to get into the roof. Uh, I hope everyone's having a good Thursday. While we have hit 40 subscribers, which is fantastic, um, risk event, you don't come a knock in. We got to put the wheels on there so it can actually rock. Right now, it won't rock until we put wheels on it. Um, but even though we've hit 40 subscribers, I do want to just remind everybody that it is indeed September. So if you would like to become a subscriber, you can save money. If you want to be a subscriber for multiple months, you'll save money that way too. Okay, so I don't need. This piece is too long for that, so I need one of these. So if you want to save some cash, you could subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't save any money by gifting subs, but also gifting subs is so cool. Because, uh, yeah, we are at, at 40 subscribers, so I don't talk about needing more. But I do want to talk about deals. Also, a thing I forgot to talk about before. So we're going to go back to this just for a second. Because I got to talk about this, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I teased you with getting Lego building. I got to talk about Pat Watches Old Wrestling, a celebration stream, which is happening this Sunday, uh, September 18th uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern and will run approximately two hours, give or take. Um, I'll be watching wrestling from All Japan Pro Wrestling, All Japan Women's, uh, 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 Michinoku Pro, and 
New Japan Pro Wrestling. That's right. We're moving out of just All Japan. I don't care because uh, sometimes I do get uh, de- my VOD videos don't get demonetized or all don't get monetized anyway, so it's fine. It might get blocked because of the New Japan, but that's okay. Uh, I recently uh, got access to a Google Drive full of so much fucking wrestling. It's astonishing. There's some TV shows from like local stuff in like Portland and Dallas. There is uh, wrestling from uh, Australia, Australia television show, lots of Japanese stuff, um, just full episodes of All Japan Classics, which are All Japan Women's Classics, which ran on television. Um, and if you're wondering, like, Pat, what is this celebration about? Well, uh, uh, I asked for some help yesterday. Uh, and the original plan was, uh, I'll do a stream where I watch wrestling and kind of promote the thing. And like, I set a coffee, a Ko-Fi, whatever you want to call it. I say coffee. I set up a coffee, like, goal, and uh, it's a funny number, 420, that's fun. But, like, you know, August was really expensive with my trip and some unexpected bills. And then, and also replacing my phone, I had to do that in last month. So that became very expensive. And then, like, some bills that I wasn't expecting to come to came due this month and well i'm gonna reach out for some help and then i just like hit my goal in a couple hours which is unbelievable so instead of it being a fun raising stream it's a celebration stream i'm celebrating i'm giving a bonus out there so i hope people will check out that stream on uh uh sunday at 7 p.m eastern uh and now we're gonna go uh back to the overhead here and uh get into uh watching me build some lego and talking about some stuff um, but yeah, so that's happening. Uh, all right. So that's a black one by fours. Great. Got that there. Um, so yeah, I hope you'll come check it out. But yeah, I, I have access now to so much goddamn wrestling, uh, um, that I can just download and then show. I want to just quickly, I mentioned some of it here. Um, also, do I have access to the Cornette garbage tapes? Yes. Is that hours and hours of people making fun of Jim Cornette and calling him garbage? No. It's uh, stuff that was left behind during the cleanout when WCW bought out um, Jim Crockett promotions. They cleaned out their offices and left behind some reels of some classic stuff, which Cornette was given by apparently a janitor. And he held on to it for a really long time and then eventually had the rights to release it on DVD. And this is the archive of that. I have episodes of Glow. I have a bunch of uh, indie stuff, just random indie stuff. Um, uh, uh, Super World Sports, which was ten, one of Tenryu's up random promotions that he ran. A lot of stuff. There's some stuff here from Hawaii, and I don't know anything about it. And then also some ECW stuff with the original audio, not the uh, sound like audio that's used on the network. Uh, I'm very excited to start digging through all of that. Uh, so I just kind of got a random assortment of some stuff. Also, I have a match from the last time I did a wrestling stream, uh, which features uh, uh, Asuka uh, under the name, uh, under her indie name, Kana. Uh, wrestling in one of her many uh, shows that she just did. She just did big shows on her own. She was a huge independent star before she got uh, signed uh, to the WWE uh, and came to NXT. And so I have one of those, which I'm excited to watch. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm just going to watch some wrestling and be very thankful for the continued support of this community, including people that won't watch that stream and aren't watching this stream. But they know who they are, and I appreciate them. Um, it's very kind. Uh, so that's so that's this uh, Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, come check that out. Uh, all right, let's see. I solved a mystery that has that has not haunted me for years, but has always been a confusing thing in my life uh, for for many years now, quite a few years. Um, and I didn't think about it every day, but I did often think about it. And that was, why does John Cena follow me on Twitter? Because it's true. John Cena follows me on Twitter. Do I follow him? Yeah. Did he follow me before I followed him? Yes. Why did that happen? 
And I never knew. And there was no one for me to ask. Because I like know a few people that at times have worked for the WWE, but never in a capacity where they were like, could just ask John Cena. Hey, John, why do you follow uh, this one comedy person from New York? And other comedy people as well, it turns out. But at the time, I only knew about myself. And I didn't know why. Cut to yesterday. When a bunch of comedy people were all tweeting out, why is John Cena following me? I don't follow John Cena. I've been following John Cena for years. Why is John Cena following me on Twitter? There were many, many people who were rightly very fucking confused as to why the C Nation, you could see John Cena on your followers list. Yes, Lord Crashes in, I can see him. Uh, because my time is also now. Um, uh, a bunch of people tweeting out, why is John Cena following me? Now, I should say, as of yesterday, John Cena follows almost, almost 400,000, or sorry, f almost 500,000 people, well over 400,000 fo uh, people. He's followed by like a million and a half people. So he doesn't just follow everyone who follows him because he was following people who are not following uh, John Cena. And it was a confusing thing. And then late last night, the answer came in a reply to Paul F. Tompkins, who was like, what kind of scam is this? Which is a very funny thing to just assume that John Cena is following me on Twitter. This must be part of a scam. I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Tompkins. Uh, but Paul uh, got a reply from Eric Appel. Eric Appel, I don't expect you to know that by name. Uh he was a comedian in New York with me. Uh, he was also a tech at UCB Theater. We go a long ways back. We started basically around the same time. Uh, he uh, directs television and uh, had his feature length debut. Uh, he recently directed Weird, the Weird Al uh, uh, like mockumentary that was also written by Weird Al and Eric Appel. Uh, so Eric is uh, worked for Funny or Die for a number of years. He did the uh, fake trailer for Weird years ago that they then eventually decided to make an actual movie, which is fun. Um, and Eric replied to uh, Paul Tompkins, I'm working on a project with John Cena. He just followed everyone I'm following. And I got to watch today everyone freak out about it and it was fun for me so that's the answer years ago my buddy bobby was in a movie with john cena bobby moynihan i'm not name dropping bobby it's important to say that's the context also i am friends with bobby moynihan and have been for a long time and he's fucking great so i will humble brag about that my friend bobby's a real good dude anyway he did a movie with john cena and John Cena followed everyone that Bobby was following on Twitter, which includes me. And that's why John Cena follows me on Twitter. And that's also why he follows a bunch of comedy people that Eric knows. Some of whom, he fo they follow people that Eric follows who don't follow Eric. Um, so if you ever get followed by John Cena, it means that someone follows you who is doing a movie or TV show or something with with the C Nation's leader. Uh, that is such a weird... So, Lashbrook, obvious... Uh, this is not obvious. John Cena doesn't use Twitter for communication. He uses it for um, promotional stuff. Uh, you know, like, sometimes he has deals where he also needs to tweet out things. But he mostly uses it to share inspirational quotes. And also, quotes that are not... Or things that are not quotes, they're just him trying to be inspirational. And I think he follows people so that they will follow him back. Yes, he just posts inspirational messages. Yeah. I sincerely believe that he um that he follows people because not because he's like, "Oh, I want to see your people," but it's how he can follow new people so that he can then reach them. Um because he's also not on television every week now, you know, twice a week sometimes, well, you know, like he used to be. So this is just how he gets out there. And then also he does share funny thoughts and feelings about like this, the cast of Peacemaker, you know, like 
he will say nice things about Steve Agee, which I like reading because I think Steve Agee is great. Uh, Steve Agee was also on the Peacemaker TV show and was the body double for Stallone's King Shark in the movie. Um, Because you ain't getting, you ain't, you are not getting uh, Stallone to put on that capture suit, but you can get Steve Agee to do it for sure. Um, uh, Error Voice says, hey, oh, this is a very nice vibe. I got to sleep though. Well, I appreciate you enjoying the vibe and you need to get some sleep, Error. It is very important to know that about yourself. So uh, I hope you have uh, a, a lovely rest. Um, the VODs will stay here. YouTube.com slash Pat Bear VODs is also another place to, to watch them. But here on Twitch, you can watch those later. Um, it's funny that with these Honda commercials, we get John Cena on ABW every week. Yes. It's real weird and also very funny that John Cena is the voiceover person for Honda commercials, which air during uh, AEW wrestling pr- programs. And that's weird and also cool. All right, so we are putting on the front lid here uh, uh, of the cab, uh, as you can see there. And then these windows do pop out like this, which is helpful for airing out the, the, the cab and all that. And, oops, yes, that goes like that. And then it all goes together and it all squishes in and everything's fine. And then the door's all open. Um, his new avatar and banner advertising some fancy alcohol. That makes sense, John Cena's. I mean, Eric could be shooting a commercial for that alcohol, for all I know. He, I do not know what my friend Eric is currently um, uh, uh, doing with John Cena, other than he is doing something with John Cena. Uh, uh, yes. Well, thank you. Yes, this model is old and great, and I've really enjoyed building it. It's been a fun build, which now we will continue by putting it aside uh, so that we can work on, uh, because we got, we got to, uh, there, we've got to move on here and get started on the rest of the roof, including the pop top. Um, Yeah, so I don't know what Eric's doing, but it solved a mystery for a lot of people as to why they were suddenly being followed by John Cena, but it also um, uh, solved the mystery of why John Cena has been following me for so many years. Uh, Because I have like a, look, a certain wrestler who likes video games was following me for a time on Twitter, but stopped following me, and it's okay. I won't say who it is. It's okay that they no longer follow me. They didn't need to follow me in the first place. Um, And then a few wrestlers follow me who follow everyone like kid bandit will follow you back if you follow kid bandit uh unless you were absolutely trash kid bandit will follow you back which is very kind of her um uh her and him and them very nice of them to do that um but uh also like there are a couple just wrestler people out there i got some wrestling journalists that follow me and also, Matthew follows me from Botchamania, which I think is very kind of him as well. Uh, all right, so let's figure out. This is one in, but we got to go dead center. We got to go dead center on this. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six. Should be this. So, this should be the dead center of this. Wait, was that? That's not dead center. Never mind. That's not dead center. Let's get this connected. This is one of these is going to go four in. So one, two, three, four. Okay. So it wasn't dead center. This is how this should go. And then it's here. So anyway, that's a mystery. I wanted to talk about it because I thought it was funny. Uh, I guess I'll do a little bit more. Eh, We'll fit, feed in. I'll just get this wrestle talk in right now because uh, I have some wrestle thoughts and I want to get some wrestle thoughts in. Um, if I can, real quick here. Um, uh, next week, we're going to see Brian Danielson versus John Moxley, who are both in the same stable of wrestlers. Uh, and the winner will be crowned the new AEW champion, uh, world champion. John Moxley recently lost that belt. He was the interim champion, and then he won the unification match. It became 
the world champion outright, and then he lost to CM Punk, and then that belt was stripped from CM Punk due to backstage things. Uh, and so it's like, okay, well, they had a tournament, and the finals are that. And look, I th- my, my like big brain thought is, one, that's going to be a fucking great match. It's going to be a real good match. We're going to see some real good wrestling for both of them. We're hard hitting. Excited to see that. John Moxley was supposed to have a vacation after he dropped the title. He was supposed to have some time off. He didn't get that time off. I wouldn't mind seeing Daniel Bryan have that belt. But here's the thing. Whoever's getting that belt won't have it for long because unless they really fuck this shit up, MJF is going to be the next champion because he has his chip, which he can cash in for a title shot whenever he wants. Him cashing in on Brian doesn't really hurt Brian. Him cashing in for a title or opportunity against Moxley kind of does hurt Moxley more, in my opinion. Uh, but that gets Daniel Bryan, uh, sorry, Brian Danielson, uh, a world championship and the company, a short reign, but a, you know, but like still a good one. Uh, Artie Sauce says, I think Danielson will get an immediate lead drop at MJF. He'll go off the ankle right away. Yes, I mean, that's the thing you could do is you can do it like that. So that's my thought. Then MJF's going to have a long run. And then the Pat Bear heart in my heart. Not not in my head, in my heart. I want him to have, you know, a few people come back and challenge. Uh, they're re- yes, last book, they're really setting up MJF versus Moxley. I don't know if they want Moxley to be a three-time champion so soon. The first, you know, three-time champion. I don't know if they want that. Maybe they do want that. But I feel like Brian winning lets Moxley take time off because of that. Uh, yes. Yeah, they're giving Brian a way out. But I, with the leg injury, but I think Brian overcomes the leg injury and but then can't overcome MJF is my is my feeling on it. Um, look, the obvious answer would be Wardlow takes the belt off MJF, completing the thing. They get a re, the you know like completing the long storyline, right? Like that probably is the person that takes it off MJF after you know, you know him threatening to walk from the, the show and all kinds of shenanigans and having hired guns in the firm uh, uh, protecting him. Uh, and all of that stuff. Um, many, many things. But what if it was Eddie Kingston? What if Eddie Kingston, who didn't want to be the heart of AEW, didn't want to be the savior of this place, just wants to be with his friends and fucking wrestle. What if Eddie Kingston was the man that saved the company? That saved the championship and brought it back. And it wouldn't be a long run. What if fucking Eddie Kingston was the world champion of a major promotion? Because he's he was the first ever champion, uh, singles champion for Chikara. You know, he's held gold in a bunch of places. What if fucking the company put the belt on fucking Eddie Kingston? They're not going to. It's going to be Wardlow. They'll, and it'll be fine. And I'll cheer because Warlow will decimate him. And it'll be great. Warlow will beat down all of the people swarming him, trying to prevent him from getting the big win. And it will be a big, cool time. But it also could have been Eddie Kingston. And I would have been fucking psyched for it. That's just me. Uh, Arctic Sauce says Stokely is so much fun. I love Big Stoke. I think Stokely Hathaway is fucking incredible. I've loved him on the indies. I loved him when he quote unquote bought the ring name uh, of uh, Chuck Taylor out from Chuck Taylor and he was uh, Chuck Taylor TM. Um, I loved him so much. I loved him in um, I loved him in NXT, I thought he was so good when he was like a conniving heel and like kind of a babyface 
when the creeds were so over that he became over because of that. Um, uh, I think he's so great. I've liked him as like a weird manager that I love that he was under Jade. Like he clearly worked for Jade. Jade didn't work for him. Um, I like his weird collection of white boys and also Lee Moriarty. Uh, Jokerified Lee Moriarty is great as well. Um, uh, I think him managing the guns is hilarious because they are terrible. Uh, so I think that is very fun. Uh, Ethan Page does. Ethan Page has never needed a mouthpiece. They keep giving Ethan Page a mouthpiece and he doesn't fucking need one. And it's so weird. But sure. Okay. Um, I think the firm, even though the firm is a deep cut hip hop reference, it's not a good name. Um, it's not a good name at all. They should be called the dirt because Stokely's got all of it. Uh, that's my take is that they should be called the dirt. That's also fun to say. Uh, but I do not think the firm is a good name and I could see them changing it. I hope they do. Because I, again, don't think it's good. Um, all right, so we need one by fours and some sixes as well. Uh, I think that's my, oh, here's an important wrestle talk. I got into an argument with someone today. It was a discussion. I don't know if it was an argument. A back and forth with somebody that really hates uh, an AEW, QT Marshall. Uh, really hates QT, which also I do because he's... Um, a heel and a mid card heel, and he's always getting in the way of the good stuff. But that's what I'm supposed to do. And the person I was talking to, I got the distinct impression that they did not enjoy QT, but couldn't recognize in themselves that QT is important. They're like, why is QT wasting my time? Why is QT on the screen when someone else could be on the screen? I'm like, well, if another person was on the screen. They would still lose. They wouldn't win just because they weren't QT Marshall. QT is in the spot to occasionally win over jobbers to get their win record up. But most part, he's there to lose to people on the way up or they think might be ready to go on the way up. QT has a very important job uh, in, 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 the, in, in the company, which is getting over talent. And he does a very good job of it. He is a he is a a face you would like a, a, like he has a face you would like to punch. He's not a face. He's got a face that you would like to punch, and you're happy when someone else punches it because you don't get to do that. Um, and he's very important for that job. And it was this weird thing where I was just like, yeah, you need someone that you don't like who can lose. It's in. And sometimes you need somebody that like you do like, and then you just get bummed about it because you're like, "Oh, I like that person," and they they never win. And it's like, yeah, that they're, they're not gonna. Um, like Serpentico, Serpentico rules, and I always hope that maybe this is the time the Serpentico is gonna win. Serpentico faced that like guy from Jersey Shore who is also a wrestler, and I was like. Maybe this is the time. It wasn't the time. But I was like, maybe this is the time that Serpentico wins. Uh, because I think Serpentico like, does a great job. And I like him. But like, that's not what Serpentico is there for. Serpentico is there to lose to people. And sometimes you need just somebody to get squashed. Like, uh, to, take, to do the job and just lose. And just get run over. Uh, like the, the guy named Matt. The very small man named Matt. That, that had to face Powerhouse Hobbs last night. That person was not going to get any offense in against Powerhouse Hobbs. They were just there to fucking lose. And they did. But sometimes you need a back and forth. You got to you gotta give people the time to work on their moves and get used to working on the ring and, and used to the hard camera and all that. And you need a dependable hand to put on a good match with them. Or see if they can get a good match out of them. And that's what QT is. QT is not going to get pushed to the moon. QT is never going to have a belt in AEW unless they um, accidentally write themselves into a corner and need to put the belt on a, a, as a transitional champion. Then QT Marshall could become the TNT champion 
to move it on from one person to another. I guess that's a possibility. I don't think it's likely, but it's a possibility. But that's it. That's it. That's the ceiling for QT is that he is just going to train the next generation or two generations, lose a bunch, and help people along the way. You know, it's not the best thing in the world, but it's something. So, I don't know. Uh, All right, I think that's all my wrestle talk. Let's get into some stuff. Uh, Nintendo. uh, Just fucking talk. They just have... Their Nintendo Direct was just like, Hey, do you like farming games? To which I reply, I like a couple farming games. So, they're like, great. We got so many of them. We've got all the farming games. We've got remakes of farming games. We've got new farming games. We've got like companies you wouldn't expect to making farming games. Oh, they're making a farming game. Uh, it was a lot of farming games. And then also Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, or Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. They're going to make that. Also, uh, um, like, hey, Pikmin is going to come out sometime. Uh, Harvestella. I have not pre-ordered Harvestella, um, but I appreciate it exists. Uh, but yeah, um, there's going to be a new Pikmin. They got nothing to tell you about that. Uh, Fire Emblem. Uh, it takes two if you want to be bummed out with a friend or family member. It takes two coming out. Um, it's the first Square Enix game I've seen that has a non-binary option. Mm, John, that is a great point to put out. Um, uh, a lot of these farming games are do we, we we want to applaud them for that. Are doing the non-binary date whoever you want, marry whoever you want. It's the audience for these have always felt very progressive, and or, or just looking for realism in a way that in that way of like yeah you should be able to date whoever and that feels very good. It is the good stuff. You're right, and John. I'm going to reply to my... I'm going to retweet my tweet. Let's see if we can get a few more friends in here. We're a little late this evening, which is okay. But, you know, if we can get a few more bodies, that would be great. A few more friends joining us tonight. Uh, as I try to finish up this good Lego set. Why not? Maybe we can. Um, uh, new Fatal... Fr- oh, a remake of the Wii Fatal Frame, which feels like... I mean, okay. I mean... I, I hope it's good. I want I want people to like it, but okay. All right, so then this goes here. This does not explain proper uh, great. That's three in, goes there, and okay. I think this goes like this. I don't know if this is properly explaining how this works, but we'll get it to go. Okay, that does look right. Okay, that is right. Uh, this is part of the pop-up. That's going to come up. We're going to pop up top here. Get that going. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Uh, there's Wave 3 of the expansion. Let's get an Eno. Uh, hey, um, there's a box, a fitness boxing game coming out in March 2023. It's Fist of the North Star Boxing. It's a fitness boxing game. With stuff from Fist of the fucking North Star. That's just a that's just a true statement. I'm I'm telling you facts right now. That's a that's a fucking fact. Uh, I feel like I should have seen Fist of the North Star right now, mm, John. I mean, you are already dead, and being very surprised that you are dead, and that is a good. That that's my short explanation of Fist of the North Star. Anyway. Uh, hey, they're making a, they're making a fucking, uh, a fucking fitness game with that. I believe that, um, the subtitle in Jap- Japan is like, you are already losing weight, which I think is very good. It's something to that effect, but it, it sounded good when I saw that. Uh, that's a weird thing. That, that is a weird, um, announcement. It's a weird branding. Oh, okay. So I'm putting this, uh, this cloth protector here thing. That is part of the pop top. I gotta get this to fit in on all of these pegs here. So we are slowly doing that. Trying to get this together here. The idea being that it'll pop up and pop down and then theoretically 
Uh, it'll this will keep it from popping up too much. So we gotta get this going here. Um, Tunic is coming to Switch, which feels like a no-brainer. But you have to remember, folks, that even if it's a no-brainer, it still takes time and money and effort to port things. So, like, even if you were like, it should have been out there day one, like, budgets have to be made and, and met for that kind of stuff to happen. I'm glad it is coming out to Switch. I'm glad the work got done. I hope it's a great version, and I hope people really, really like it. But it's not as simple as just being like, hey, this PC game is now on Switch. Like, that's not, you, you don't just hit the button and it does it. Uh, there's no s Switch that can be flipped to then have a Switch version. You got to do work on it. So I'm glad that they're doing that work. Uh, that and Ninja Scrolls are two anime that were always the Sun Coast and Sam Goody. Hell yeah. I wish it would just hit the Nintendo button on you. Yeah. Yes. I wish that that button existed. That button does not exist. The Switch Switch. Yes, there is a fan. There's no Switch on the Switch that you just hit and then you hit that Switch. Uh, you don't. That, that doesn't exist, unfortunately. What if it did? Oh, what if it did? Um, all right, so now we're going to be building the top of our topper, our topper top, um, uh, front mission stuff. Yeah, there are a lot of front mission things coming. They delayed that front mission before because of the war. Uh, and now that's actually coming out, um, the GameCube, the remake of the GameCube game story of seasons, uh, is coming out in su next summer. They gave a date for that. Um, if you are a, a big Story of Seasons fan, uh, Splatoon 3, uh, stuff, uh, the Splatfest is coming, um, at the, uh, in a, in, a, in a couple weeks, Octopath Traveler 2, 16 Travels, that's not the subtitle, but it should be, uh, it, I don't know if it should be, but it's not the subtitle, it should be, um, Octopath Traveler 2 is coming out. Uh, eight new travelers coming out in February. Uh, I don't think they delayed front mission. They definitely did the... Oh, Advance War. It wasn't front mission. It was Advance Wars. Thank you very much for correcting me. That was... I did have the wrong uh, game. Fingers crossed is a Golden Sun combined. Yeah. I mean, good luck. But yeah, yes, that, that would be very funny. Uh, all right. So now we got to build this here. Putting this on like that. Putting this on like that. Um, and then a bunch of farm things. Uh, there's... So... Final Fantasy uh, Theaterism Final Bar will, at the end of the day, have 385 songs, including songs from Live Alive and Octopath, Octopath Traveler and Near. Uh, I know very little about, uh, theater rhythm, except that, like, some people fucking love that shit, and some people do not. Um, but it's good, it's quite a fun name, and I like that, it's gonna have so many things in there. Uh, Rune Factory 3 Special, it's coming to the Switch. Uh, and then... Rune Factory 5 came out earlier this year, thank you for the note, Polygon. Uh, also, there's going to be some N64 games. Like, the big news story is that, like, they're getting GoldenEye 007 on Switch Online, an expansion pack. And if you get the 007, if you get the Switch version, you get multiplayer. And But the other versions that are coming out will not have the multiplayer because that's that work is being done by Nintendo not by anybody else so not by like the people putting it out so that's why the nintendo version is getting multiplayer it sounds like i thought the big starter story was mario party one through three i'm probably gonna uh, buy that game i played one on the 3ds and a lot of the songs that i know okay arista fan that sounds awesome you'll have to let me know um yeah no uh Pile Living 64, Mario Party 1 through 3, Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Stadium 2, Pokemon Stadium 2, fucking great. Uh, 1080 Snowboarding and Excite Bike 64 are all coming to Switch Online. Uh, and some of them are coming this year.
So good, 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 good. All right, so now we're gonna put this down here. Uh, like that? No. Mm. Oh, it's gotta go like this. And then you line up that with this. Just trying to get all this right here. Okay, and then the pop top pops up. Pop top. One of these is wrong. I did one of these wrong. Hooray. I did this one wrong. I put this on the top instead of that piece on the top. That's fun. And now it's fixed. Uh, N64 offerings have done nothing for me so far and didn't change the new batch. I guess I only really like the it for the hockey games. I understand. I liked... I didn't think Turok was bad on the 64. I liked both of the stadium games. The Pokemon Stadium. Uh, uh, N64 offerings have maybe just go to the flash drive with all the N64 games instead. I understand, John. Um, and then some other stuff. Mario Strikers Battle League, which is a free update with Pauline and Diddy Kong. Hell yeah, Diddy Kong. Um, more stuff coming in there. Uh, more Mario Kart Deluxe. That's not nothing new. We've, we've known there's just going to be more. There's going to be a lot more Mario. They're going to put like most of the Mario Kart uh, tracks on there. Uh, Switch Sports, uh, Golf is coming with online play, uh, update players, that's fun, that's good. And then Pikmin 4. Pikmin 4, and then also Just Dance 2023 edition. Um, and there's a BTS song in there. I still have my N64, but just have no interest in going back to it. Yeah, I understand that the N64 was a weird system. Super Mario 64 is... Like the best game on that system, in my opinion. And like you can play that other ways if you want to. So like I totally understand if you are just not super deep and super nostalgic for that particular thing. Totally understand. Go like that. This goes like this. Uh Pikmin 4 is a nice logo. Yeah, I thought the logo looked good. Uh just dance 2023 will change everything. How would dance it? I mean Something's got to change. So if it's that, I mean, fine. I'll take it. Uh, Harvestella, Bayonetta 3. Hey, yeah, Bayonetta 3. That's coming. Bayonetta 3 is going to be there. Uh, Rain Code I didn't, didn't look great. Uh, Sifu is coming, which, like, i pleasantly surprised that's going to run on a Switch. Okay. Hell yeah. Hey, here's a thing that I forgot that came out on Tuesday. Direct, like directly after the fucking thing, radiant motherfucking silver gun. Am I good at radiant silver gun? Fuck no. I'm never gonna be good at radiant silver gun. Do I think radiant silver gun is cool as shit? Yes, I do. Uh, so that's out. You can just play that now. Don't play it now because I'm streaming and I want you to watch. But yeah, um, Tales of Symphonia remastered. I like Tales of Symphonia, so that's fun. Uh. Oh, and it got taken down a few hours later because of bugs? I did not see that. That's a shame. And also, what? What are we doing? Uh, Life is Strange Collection, uh, which is Life is Strange Remastered and Life is Strange Before the Storm. That's coming real soon. That's cool. Uh, I Yeah, I did, had not heard that Reading Silver Gun got taken down. That's a shame. Uh, let's see. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Fuck yeah. Kirby and Pals. Four player local co op. Local co op. That's cool. Coming next year. Love Kirby. Love Kirby. Just want to point that out. Love Kirby. Uh, and that's it. Um, now, the Sony announcement was like 10 games in 20 minutes and people were still somehow disappointed. And I don't know. Well, there is nothing that can make people not disappointed. Um, but it it is one of those things where I was just like, like, I don't I don't know. Like they came out and said what it would be. And people were like, there wasn't enough. And it's like, I mean, they told you I have the Kirby on Wii U. Uh, don't need a shinier version. Well, there you go, Lord Crashton. Well, so, well, here's the thing. 
Not everybody bought a Wii U. So for some people, this will be the first time they're playing that. Uh, so I understand why they are putting it out like that. Um, but anyway, look, was one of the more exciting things from this event... Ooh, okay. How did I do this wrong? Oh, put this on wrong. Uh, was one of the more exciting uh, things from this event uh, a controller that's coming out? Yes. Am I getting that controller? No. Do I still think that controller was cool looking? Yep, 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 yep. Did we talk about GoldenEye? Yes. Yeah, last uh the online being exclusive to uh, the Switch, considering that the Switch is not, Nintendo is not known for their online, but because they did all the work uh, to make it have the online, um, that like, that's why it's there, basically, uh, is very funny. It's funny. Um, but yes, we did we did mention GoldenEye when we were talking about the N64 releases. Uh, but Sony, moving on to Sony. Uh, they got a new controller that looks kind of neat. Um, Tekken 8 was the thing that was probably the big thing for a lot of people. Uh, because it confirmed that Tekken 8 is coming out at some point. Who knows when, but there's going to be Tekken 8. Also, there's a lot of talk about how Tekken is the longest continuized, continually... There's some weird... Guinness thing that doesn't sound quite right. Anyway, um, Tekken has had the same story, a continuous story between each Tekken game. And that makes it like the longest franchise storyline or something. Because like, yes, there are game franchises that this is longer than that, but they're a continuous one. Uh, so anyway, they showed the trailer and people were like, fuck yes, this trailer. What's going on here? Cool, cool, cool. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a fighting person, but I do like Tekken endings and I think Tekken is cool. So good. Um, there's a PSVR two thing, uh, for star Wars and then, uh, Demio, I believe is the name of that. Um, which is like a dungeon crawler that looks like a tabletop RPG. So, you know, PSVR 2 is a thing. It's going to come out, I guess. Some people are fucking psyched about it. I want them to be happy. I want people to like things. Uh, like a Dragon, Ishin, which is the um, uh, uh, the Yakuza spinoff, um, which, which is not a new game that was released just in Japan, and it was the, like, Samurai... Um, throwback uh, kind of series. So that is now coming out uh, to more people. We'll be able to play that outside of Japan, uh, which is cool. And it is going to be called uh, Like a Dragon uh, because that's what they're going for forward. Uh, there was the uh, Harry Potter bullshit. There's some Harry Potter bullshit. Um... Pacific Drive is like a driving uh, survival game, and I and I just don't want to care. I just don't want to care about zombies, and I don't think I can. I just don't think I can care about a zombie game in two thousand twenty two or two thousand twenty three when it comes out on PC and PlayStation Five. First person driving survival games set. Look, it's set in the Pacific Northwest. I like that. That area of the country uh, gets some cool, spooky games. And I think that's neat that they get those. But, like, I don't fucking, I don't fucking care. <laughs> I just don't care about that game. Um, then there's their loyalty pro program, which they named PlayStation Stars, which is a thing. Uh, I saw a thing today about how the sales of Ghost of Tsushima made them think Ishin might actually sell well in the West and thought it was very funny. I mean, why not have a samurai game made by a Japanese studio? That sounds pretty good. Uh, I think the idea that like a dragon sold so well and Zero sold so well and the other remakes sold so well would be a better indication that uh, Anything saying like a dragon would sell well, but I don't know. I'm not an analyst. Uh, the dad driving game 
about not stopping for anything. Yes, do not stop for anything. PlayStation Stars is delecto- digital collectibles. They're not NFTs. They're digital collectibles. They're not NFTs. They're digital collectibles. Um, Sin Duality is a Nam- Bandai Namco. They're making fucking video games. I guess. They're technically making video games. Because that is a video game. It's a video game as video game. I guess. I, I didn't get much out of it. I don't know. Uh, oh, I need two, four, five. I need six of these. And then we're going to get some plates on here. We're getting there, friends. I think we are going to finish this tonight. I think we're going to finish the fight. Uh, uh, it's an, oh, now an anime. Okay, yeah. Bandai is bringing Tales of Symphonia to the Switch as well. Yes. Uh, the Tales of Symphonia remake is going to the Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... Okay, yeah. Uh, Sony console exclusive. Uh, Stellar Blade. Um, is like... I believe... It was called Codename Project Eve. And... Eve is the main character, and the other character is named Adam. And uh, it's a Korean studio making it for uh, for Sony, which is cool. Uh, and it's a little bayonetta y And I don't know if it's going to be good, but I, I like a lot of what I'm hearing about it. In the fact that, again, it's a, uh, a Korean studio working on this, making a big action uh, thing. And uh, I don't know, that seems neat. I hope it's very good, this action RPG. Oh, no. The Rise of the Rowan is the action RPG. That was just an action series. Uh, Rise of the Rowan looked fine. Also, that game, apparently, Team Ninja, they're just like, hey, that's 2024, which is like, oh, ways from now. So, okay. that's a, that, that is quite some time from now. Um, so, I guess we'll hear more about uh, Rise of the Ronin in the future. Uh, and then uh, the God of War Ragnarok DualSense controller. And then a trailer for God of War Ragnarok. Which looks beautiful. But does not seem to be anything that I want to play. I just don't. I've never been into God of War. I've just never been into it. The last one like intrigued me, but it didn't make me want to get it. Uh, yeah, I've just um, I've just never been interested in that franchise. Uh, I think I played Kratos in other video games more than I've played a God of War game. Just not not my thing, not my interest. Uh, I hope it's great. I hope people have a fucking killer time playing it. Uh, I hope it gets everything people want, but it's not doing it for me. Never has. All right, so this goes in here. All right, uh, and that's the Sony thing. Um, the big TGS thing was they were like, "Hey, uh, for me anyway." Maybe you had some TGS stuff. That you were like, oh no, Pat, this is the thing I care about with TGS. Uh, it's got a good meaty man slapping meat with other big meaty men and women and creatures. Yeah, just never been a thing that I was like, okay. I just don't think the set pieces have ever intrigued me. And that feels like a game that's just like, check out these set, set pieces. And then also, kill, kill, kill. And I've just I've never been like, hell yeah, this is my jam. It's just never been my jam. Um... So we're getting a bunch of Like a Dragon games. And guess what? That's what they're calling it now. They're going full in on calling it Like a Dragon instead of Yakuza, which I think is a fine idea, and I do not mind it. Uh, um, I think it is a totally awesome choice for them. Also, uh, Like a Dragon 8, Kenny Omega is going to be in that shit. That rules. Uh, I think that's very cool. Uh, the, they like putting wrestlers in, in, in that franchise. And I think that's awesome. The idea of Kenny Omega in Yakuza 8 is cool. Um, 
Also, they won't let Kiryu, Kiryu retire, and they should let Kiryu retire. Let that man rest to keep dragging him back in into bullshit. And I think they need to let let that boy retire. Come on. Uh, all right, now we got to put these here. We need two and two, and then two of these. Oh yeah, here. Okay. Um. More cool people doing side stuff in Yaka Dragon games. Yeah, I mean, I think that's great. Um, let's see if there's anything else from... Ooh, we dropped some frames there. My apologies, folks. I don't know. I, don't, I, I never know why that happens, but I, I certainly don't, don't enjoy it. So my apologies for that. Um, let's see. Other things. Layoffs. Uh, we're going to take a pause for the cause in a moment or two. Um... Cause I don't really have a lot to say about all the layoffs. Uh, my, uh, uh, sympathies to everyone affected at fan bites and, uh, uh, future and G4. Um, I, uh, my sympathies to all of you. And I am sorry that you are a laid off. So, so many people, including folks, uh, speaking of, um, uh, being in TGS, including the folks, uh, at least one, who is in TGS, covering TGS for Fanbyte, and was laid off while in fucking Japan. Uh, that's goddamn awful, and a new weird low. Uh, I guess right now Fanbyte is um, Merit, and then like some guides writers. Apparently Merit K, and then some guide writers. Appear to be all the people left at there. Uh, I believe that Merritt had just started a new podcast, but the podcast producer has also been laid off. Uh, also, a, one of their, their summer intern was laid off like a day before they were done, which is very weird. Yes. No, not his last day, Lord Gratchton. The day before his last day, he got laid off. Uh, yeah, he had very little time left there. They could have just let him fill it out. Also, they were calling people one by one. And it's not like word wasn't getting out. Also, a uh, friend of the stream, friend of mine, Danielle Riendo, um, the uh, MMA EMT, uh, the, one of the loveliest people in games, uh, it has been laid off, the editor-in-chief. And uh, we certainly uh, send our, uh, hope you get another, hope you get another several jobs because you always have a bunch of jobs. But, uh, I hope, uh, uh, I, as I said on Twitter, I look forward to whatever site picks her up suddenly becoming better because they will, uh, cause Danielle is incredible. Uh, I feel like the situation has happened before, but the game's calm. Yes, dirty. It has happened before where some people, we're there. Ooh, we're dropping more frames. Fuck. Hopefully we come. Okay. Looks like we're back. Sorry about that, friends. Uh, looks like we were dropping some frames. And that is not good. But I don't have any control over it. Um, so hopefully that won't turn. Yes. But big shame for Danielle. Uh, big shame for everybody. Uh, it is... Uh, you, you hate to see it. You hate the idea of it. You wish it didn't happen. And uh, all of this could be fucking avoided. But it won't be. Because that way Tencent can lose a little less money than they're losing. Fucking yikes. Uh, look, the answer is not Patreon for everybody. The answer is Patreon for some people, certainly. But it is not the solution for everybody's problems. Uh, but, you know, you do feel for people and you hope they land on their feet and find work. Speaking of work, I got to work out my need to promote myself. We are going to get back to building. We are so close to finishing the roof of this. And then we have to build the front and then put the wheels on and we're done. We're going to stay late if we have to. We're going to finish the fight. But right now, I need to promote myself. And the first thing I want to promote is my extra stream on Sunday. I got a stream on Sunday. It is called Pat Watches Old Wrestling, a celebration stream, celebrating uh, uh, some fundraising efforts that I did yesterday that paid off. 
Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, and I'll be watching stuff from All Japan Pro Wrestling, Michinoku Pro, uh, All Japan Women, and, of course, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, we got a, 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 and also an independent thing, but I don't have, it was just an independent thing. I just wanted, didn't want to just put a photo of Kana right there, but it is a uh, Asuka as, as Kana match that we'll be including as well. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, watching some wrestling. That'll be this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So check it out. Um, Dirty already did it, but if you're currently a subscriber, you can throw the bear cave, the Lego, the site, the moat in the chat. Let the people know. Uh, uh, you get the, uh, if you're a tier two, you get the bear emote. Uh, you can throw there, the blue emote, I should say. Uh, being a subscriber is the easiest way to support what I do here. Cash money or your prime gaming token. Um, if you would like to jump in, uh, that would be rad with a subscription. You could save money because it's September. So if you wanted to, you could become a, uh, um, uh, a subscriber and save cash, cash money um, throughout the month of September. So get on that if you're if you've been thinking about it, you're on the fence. You could gift a sub, you could join, you could knock out Njan or Aristofan from the uh, gift sub leaderboard with two gift subs. Just pop them right out of there and say, no, 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 it's my time. Also, if you want, you could do bits and coins. Always appreciate it. But that's not the only way to support what I do. Uh, there is another way to support me with financially, which is to jump in on my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Pat Bear. There's a $1, $3, $5, and $10 tier. There are different rewards for different tiers. Consider it. Just take a look. We'll get through these rapid fast and then get back to building this Lego set. But I do got to do my ads. I do got to promote myself. Um, so consider it. Think about it. Maybe get in on it. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Pat Bear. Uh, you could subscribe for free. And if you haven't subscribed by now, I would love you to. Um, but also jump over there and get in on it uh, because you could join. $2 a month. Become a member there. You get my Wednesday videos on Tuesday. Send them out a day early for you. So uh, that that's something you could do if you want to. Um, let's see. We got YouTube. We got that. We got that. Direct donations because those are all monthly things. But maybe one time you just want to do a direct donation. Uh, and that way you could do uh, coffee or Ko-Fi, uh, PayPal or Stream Elements. And everything I make through direct donations through YouTube, which also includes AdSense. So watch those videos and see those ads. Um, through Patreon and through Twitch, all goes into a fund. I take money out of that fund and buy model kits and Lego sets. Um, uh, I am work. I do have. I do know what kit I'm working on next. I will be working on a case for a Raspberry Pi next because I have my Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to be putting a case on, on it and enclosure and putting on like a heat sink. And putting on like um, uh, a, a cooling fan. I'm going to put a fan in there in the case. So I got to like do that. And I don't usually do tech stuff like that. So that would be fun. That's what's coming next. And then after that. Oh, I'm working on some Gundam Wing mobile suits. Very excited about that. That's the, the next thing. Um, now, if you want me to say after those things are done. To work on something that you purchased off Amazon. You could buy something from my Amazon wish list. I've got a wish list there, and it'll jump the queue. I'll shoot a video dedicated about it. This Lego set came in for a friend. It jumped the queue. Uh, but yeah, if you go to the Amazon wish list, uh, you can find inexpensive Lego sets, very expensive sets, uh, model kits ranging with free shipping, with, with prime shipping, with no free shipping, inexpensive things, very expensive things, things that are like have dropped in price over time, things that never seem to drop price, all kinds of different stuff. And there's some gear at the bottom because it's always nice to have some gear. Uh, both practical and impractical g gifts uh, for me, your friend Pat. Uh, consider it. Take a look at it. See if there's something that you would like. Um, and uh, yeah, I would appreciate that. Uh, there's an alternative to Amazon. There's always an alternative to Amazon. Uh, you could go to Throne. That's a more curated wish list. And I appreciate Throne as a company. So you go see that. And then also you can go check out uh, a USA Gundam store and buy a gift card. And then you can uh, send me a DM on Twitter because my DMs are open with that gift card code. And I will use that gift card code to purchase something. And it will be neat. Uh, so uh, consider doing that uh, if, if you want to. You don't have to, but if, if you wanted to. 
buy me a gift card to USA Gundam Store. You could do that. Uh, join my Discord if you haven't already. Uh, I got a couple of video links for you to check out, and then we'll get back to the building and talk about some anime. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. A couple of video links for you to check out. The first one is Pepper's Anime Club. I will have... Uh, no, this is the new one. That's right. Not the new one. Hey, Dunk. I'm just doing a couple of little bits of self-promotion, and then we'll get back to uh, uh, Lego building. Um, Pepper's Anime Club. Uh, I put up a new episode, uh, uh, which, boy, my brain is just not uh, remembering what that video is. So I'm going to quickly look at it because uh, I don't remember. Ah, this is a primer on anime music videos. That's what it was. Uh, AMVs have been a thing for 40 fucking years. This is the 40th anniversary year of anime music videos. And I did a whole video about a primer on it, like explaining what it is, its cultural significance, why they exist, do they still exist to this day, and just kind of talk the history of them. Uh, so check that out if you've always been curious about that and why there's why there's so much butt rock about Vegeta being cool. It's mostly a, a product of its time more than anything else. But yeah, the self-expression of that. And then Do You Remember is an ongoing video series where I hastily research a topic and then shoot a video based on what's in my memory. And uh, this week I did a whole thing on uh, John Masita Jr. It's the Micro Machine Man, the FedEx guy from the commercial, the fast talking man. At one time, the world's fastest talking man who then disputes that there are other people that talk faster than him. Because why wouldn't he dispute that? But yeah, the actor and spokesman and fast talking person that did a hundred micro machine commercials which seems like an unnecessary amount but sure go off i guess uh but yeah i did a thing on that and i learned some things and i knew some things about them that weren't included in there uh and i included that information just other things that i had known about the man that aren't on his wikipedia page which feels weird anyway uh, check that out if you haven't already. And now we are going to, uh, I'm going to drink a little water. We're going to talk about some anime. Uh, before we can get into the anime talk, I have to dramatically transition back to the overhead and drink a little water right now. Ah, uh, all right. Let's get back into this and let's talk about some anime. So, uh, Doomsday with my dog. If you have not been watching this, it's on High Dive. I highly recommend it. They are very short episodes. Uh, they're like a minute and a half long. Quick hits. Um, it is a, a, available in Japan. It's just like a web series, but it is on High Dive here in the United States. And it is a motion comic about uh, the post-apocalypse where the last surviving human hangs out with her Shibu Inu. That is just trying to keep uh, her uh, his master sane. Um, Haru is a good dog, and uh, and just doing doing their best uh, to like make sense of the world, which which we which we appreciate. Um, let's see, try to get this on like that. Okay, great, we're good. Um, so yeah, uh, I think Juzo Dog is very funny, and this episode. Uh, they're episode 21 and 22. They come up in batches on High Dive. Right now, uh, uh, we have episodes 21 and 22 to talk about. Uh, the human girl, we never know her name. Uh, and there's a joke about that in this episode where we almost learn her name. Um, or next episode. Uh, she can hear the voices of... She can hear the voices of animals. That's the other thing I should have said. She can communicate with her dog and has been able to before the apocalypse. She was always able to talk with her dog. So it's not anything new. It's weird. Anyway, um, uh, she can hear the voices of insects, and they are loud, which she's trying to goddamn sleep uh, and frustrates her. Uh, let's see. Uh, Haru has a lot of complaints uh, when wishing on a star, things that we would like for her master to ch or his master to change. Um, and then the second episode is all about, it's four little parts. It's all about a loop. Haru is stuck in a loop talking to a cappy because the cappy took... Uh, Haru's memories and when the master trades her memories for Haru to get uh, Haru's then Haru has to like be reintroduced and it's a whole thing um, 
And then there's a point, I, 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 as I mentioned, there's a, a part where there's almost a gag. We almost get a gag of Haru uh, finding out what their master's actual name is because we don't know her name. Uh, but in the end, everyone gets their memories back after several more loops. But then the loop is restarted once again because the problem they because they the Cappy erases the memory of meeting the Kappa the cap not Cappy Kappa not a Cappy bar this is a Kappa these are the uh, the like frog toad creatures that also have like monk heads they have like bald heads um, that their memories are erased of meeting the Kappa and then the Kappa gets hooked on a fishing line which apparently started all that once again restarting the loop so that's all an unending nightmare all right so now we're gonna put the roof on we are almost done with this roof hell yeah we did the roof so we got the roof rack in the back with the straps we've got the pop top which just pops up like that which you can see oh, move my mouse you can see right there there's the pop top the pop top is up and we can pop that down and now all we have left is the face of it. We got to we got to build the front. So now we're going to put this off to the side again. Whoops, shaky. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll put this somewhere else. I don't like moving this with one hand. I'm going to put that I have no good place to put this cuz it's so big. I'm going to put it here. I'll put it here. I'm going to move some pieces around. This is just so big and bulky. We're going to put that right there for now. It is th one of the biggest Lego sets I've built in a long time. Uh, I think the Lego... I mean, some of the Lego Ninja stuff, Ninja Go stuff, was pretty big. Some of the Jets. Um, the uh, uh, Millennium Falcon. The 2011 Millennium Falcon was, pr was and still is the biggest Lego set I've built on stream. Because that thing was just tall and wide and great. Anyway, let's build the front of this thing. Uh, and then I'm going to talk to you about, uh, uh, Yure Deco. Yure Deco is an original animation, uh, that is done by Science Saru. Science Saru made my face. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm... I thought I was short a piece. I have these extras. These were pieces that I went through and, and didn't think I needed. Glad I saved them all. I am not short this piece. I need this piece. I was like, uh-oh, am I short a piece? I'm not. So hopefully uh, I didn't mess up any of the other extras, but if I did, I could just go in there. Um, so Science Saru made Keep Your Hands Off Isaac in, which was my favorite show of the year 2020. Uh, and I enjoy them quite a bit uh, in, in general. Um, uh, as a company, I didn't like the five episodes of... of uh, you Ray Deco that I watched. Um, overall, I don't think it's a good show. It's trying, to, it's kind of trying to talk about, and maybe it does get into it more later. It's kind of trying to talk about like social media, kind of, and like the problems with it, sort of, because it's a future world where everyone has a deco, which is like this like thing, and there's a lot of like, like likes are a currency. The currency is called love, and like. I, I, I get what it's trying to do. I don't think it's necessarily great at doing it. Um, and I think it's just kind of weird for weird sake, but it's beautiful looking. So maybe you just want to check it out. Um, also, the name of the island is Tom Sawyer Island, and that feels like too on the note. Like, it just feels like too obvious. Like, oh, cool. The leader of the group of the detective club is named hack okay it's hack cool all right like obviously the best character in the whole thing is mr watson who is just a big man in a suit that doesn't talk but occasionally writes things down and has a cat uh a mask on a large cat mask on obviously Mr. Watson is the best character, and I love him to death. Also, the mysterious figure is named Phantom Zero. And that just feels like, it's like trying to be like, hey, we're using hacker terms. And it's it's trying just really hard, and I don't think it succeeds. I think it is cool. I think the animation is really gorgeous. I'm not surprised that 
with an original piece that Science Saru would be making something so uh, pretty looking. I just think for the most part, it is trying way too hard to be like cool and weird. And it just comes off as like not cool and not particularly that weird. Uh, so I do not think I will be finishing uh, Yure Deco. Um, also, I don't dislike Barry, the main character. Um, and I like the idea that she has a damaged Deco that lets her see things that other people can't see. I think that is like kind of clever and kind of interesting. But overall, uh, the show left me feeling pretty flat. Um, so yeah, so that's Yuri Deco. Not the biggest fan. Um, Overlord season four. I am episode to episode on, on that show. I am going to finish Overlord season four. I don't know if there's 13 episodes or 12, so I'm going to have to find out. Um, I can't recommend this show at all. I think the first season of Overlord is really interesting. The idea of a villainous isekai character, because there are very few instances of that in general, specifically a villainous uh, isekai anime. Uh, and at the time, there weren't a lot of anime that were uh, trapped in a video game or reincarnated in a video game or the video game is now real and I'm the the avatar of the character I played. Like that was, for when Overlord came out, that wasn't a, a thing that was saturated. Um, so I think some of that, and even following a villainous character, like I don't generally tend to go all in on anime about villainous characters. It's generally not my thing, but I'm not opposed to it. Uh, but over the years, the, the story's gotten more and more convoluted as we're now in season four. And also the animation has gotten so fucking dependent on mixing in computer generated stuff throwing in CG animation of monsters. It's like, eh, hey, monsters, sure, I can see that. Uh, you know, you don't want to keep making that. Or you had to have like a thousand um, uh, trolls or whatever. And so you were like, not going to do that. So you're using computer generated to make all of it. I get that. I understand it. But um, if they have like a big battle scene, they'll use CG for just humans. And it looks awful. Because there'll be like digital characters talking and interacting. And in the background, there'll be like a thousand just identical human archers. And it's just like, this looks awful. And then the story isn't like anything to write home about. Now, season four, I should say, I think I tweeted this, but I, I do stand by it. I appreciate that season four has made me like... The vampire uh, NPC to come to life, Shaltier. I do like Shaltier because she is so innocent and stupid. Um, and I do appreciate her um, because she's trying so hard to understand things. Uh, and even though she is vicious and violent, she is like fun. And I don't hate that about her. So I, so I applaud... Uh, oh, it looks like we had a pre-roll out there. Sorry. So I applaud the creators of this series and the manga for doing a good job of making me appreciate and like Shaltier, a character I've almost never cared about. Um, so, so yay on that, I guess. Oh, I missed a step. So now I have to do that. Um... Yeah, but overall, I'm going to finish it because I've watched... Look, it's my third... This is the season four. Like, it's diminishing returns. We are starting to get more and more people that uh, are garbage and I want them to be dead. And that's good because uh, this show, more than any other show I can think of that has a villain, reveled in the villain being villainous. Like, season three murdered a lot of cool awesome characters and also season two but season three particularly just murdered so many they built up characters for you to care about them to then murder them and it and it felt like they were doing it 
just to be like, ha ha ha, you fell into our trap. You liked this character and now they're dead. And it was just like, okay, like, all right. I guess you thought maybe people would think that Ein's al Ghul was cool and you want him to not be as cool. I guess that's why you're doing this. But I don't fuck. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, I think a lot of shows are going to age terribly. And the shows that are going to age the most bad are going to be the shows that have that use a blend of CGI. I think, sorry, I'm going to say this. I think the shows that are fully CG, the CGI shows, are going to hold up better than these digital shows that have really bad looking CG. Um, and that's why I applaud so much um, uh, Sage. I think uh, My Isagai Life uh, is so great because of that. I don't think it's like a stellar show. But the fact that it's all CG is so nice. And even like Black Summoner, all of the monsters have been digital, which I appreciate. Now, the Death Knight is CG and it looks weird. But they don't do the thing that like Skeleton Knight did where they have like, well, because the main character is CG in a world of digital, when we have actors characters interact with him will make them CG as well. I think that just looks bad and that's always going to age poorly and that series is always going to look bad. This season is full of shows that are going to age poorly uh, and that's a shame but also that's kind of like the trend in 2000 uh, the 2020s is just like some shows are just always going to look terrible uh, and that's a shame. Uh, again, the one, uh, A plus I can say, not the one plus, A plus I can say about, uh, Yure Deco is that it just does look incredible, especially for, uh, a completely original series. It does look rad. All right. So then we need one of these here. Great. Um, and that's it. Uh, now it's the part of the stream. I want to hear from you. What are y'all playing right now? What are you into? What What are you like? Hey, this is the video game that I've been checking out. Um, I have been playing Arcade Paradise. I am. I'm not near the end, but I have. I'm. I'm kind of at the point now where I need to start really playing the video games, like the the arcade games, which is like not really my favorite part. I think my favorite part is like earning money and running the laundromat and like cleaning and like running around. But like there could be perks that I could be getting from playing those games. And so I really need to like bog down and play those games. But I've been really enjoying like my time just fucking around uh, and trying to like improve things. But I'm, I'm getting close to being done with, with Arcade Paradise. I, I mean, I might... I might be getting close to me being done. I don't know necessarily if I'm getting close to like actually finishing that game, but I am getting close to being like time to put this thing to bed. Uh, John says, I just finished Rhapsody, a musical adventure and now starting up some uh, uh, Monarch uh, working through that switch backlog. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, just another spice. He says, I've been replaying uh, RE7. Okay. Nice. On, on PS5. Yay. 60 frames per second. Also yay. Uh, also, Last of Us Part 1 Remake, finishing the main game and starting the Left Behind DLC. Hell yeah. Enjoy that. Enjoy your uh, your Left Behind DLC. Arctic Sloth says, I'm playing Getting My Shit Together in between Zone Out sessions with No Man's Sky and Elden Ring. Well, good luck up to you on getting your shit together. That's a, that's a tough game. Um, but yeah, uh, but uh, I, hope, I hope you pull it off uh, real tight on there. Uh, but you know, plenty of replay value on, on getting your shit together. So, uh, good luck to you. All right, we gotta get some silver on here. We are getting so close to. We might actually be done with this like at eleven, and I might not have to stay late. But again, folks, I will fucking stay late. Um. So yeah, if anybody else has anything they're playing or or watching right now, if you got any like TV you're really into, any YouTube stuff, um, I've been watching Retro Future on YouTube. Uh, a, 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 a kind, uh, British, uh, young man. I think he's younger than me. So I'll call him a young man, uh, who does 
He's just fucking obsessed with the Game Boy and all variations of the Game Boy. Uh, he does some like repairs and some retro writing and some like fixes. He buys like rare Game Boy like pockets and uh, and colors and like and weird weird handhelds uh, and, and and accessories and does some videos on that. Uh, just you know, you know, seems seems fine. Elliot seems like a fine gentleman, but I'm watching a lot of that. That's a lot of him. My night viewing is just him like f taking apart a Game Boy po pocket and and cleaning it up and making it look good, and then putting it on like a, by doing retro brighting, but not putting it outside, but putting it like because it's a Game Boy, putting it under like like a nail, a UV nail thing, and I was like, I don't know, I've been enjoying that. That's been fun. Getting my shit together is a game. I'm definitely not marathoning, says him, John. Well, I understand. Sometimes you need to put that down for a little while and you come back to it later. You, you can't just focus solely on that game. Sometimes you got to give it a little a little time. Uh, I really like this here. We've got these chrome pegs and then we're putting the lights, the clear orange over it uh, for our blinkers. I think that is a very cool effect. I like that a lot. Just gonna get start getting this front together here of our Volkswagen camper van. Um, okay, so here's a thing that I haven't said yet that I've been thinking about for a little while. Um, I understand as a 42 year old person uh, that I, uh, I I have a different view of that some people do, younger people do of uh, content creators. Right. Like I understand that there's lots of people out there that will never read a game review. They will watch a Twitch stream uh, of someone playing a video game or they will watch a YouTube review um, of someone playing a video game. Um, but they're never going to go out there and uh, read a review in, in, on a website or or anything like that. That's just not their thing. They're they're looking at. They're looking at content creators on YouTube and Twitch and TikTok for their gaming needs. Uh, oh, I should say, uh, Aristofan says, I've been playing a bit of Tinykin on Game Pass as a platformer with Pikmin like mechanics. Pretty chill. I've heard very good things about that game. I have not checked that out myself, but I have heard good things. And it's nice to hear uh, that people seem to like that game. Um, but yeah, uh, basically, I totally understand people being like... Uh, that's just not for me, right? But I think that basically someone referred to Donkey as a game critic, a games critic. And I I don't agree with that myself. Uh, I don't view video game Donkey as a game critic. Now, does Donkey do reviews of games? Yes, on his YouTube he will do reviews of games, dunk views. Um, they are often less funny than his pure comedy videos, which to me, he's a co comedy person. He makes comedy videos on YouTube. And he, uh, um, but I don't necessarily view him as someone that makes pure, like, like I, I view him as someone that makes entertainment for people, but not necessarily as a as a critic i would not look for him i would look for his opinion the same way i would look for people that stream or make youtube videos but i wouldn't look for him in the same way as like oh this is like yes this is a knowledgeable person about this subject i'm gonna go check it out first things first i'm looking at donkey as an entertainer not as a person as a critic and i don't think other people should either uh now why am I talking about that? Because I saw he just recently put up a video about Splatoon 3. Now, if you watch his Splatoon 3 video, he's kind of actually really playing up the idea. He's playing with the idea that uh, the console stuff like, you know, forget Xbox, forget PlayStation. Uh, Nintendo's done it. This is the best shooter in the world. Splatoon 3 is the best shooter. All these other shooters are terrible. He doesn't mean those things because he says in it, I don't play shooters, but I play a lot of shooters and this is the best one. We know he plays shooters. We know he's liked them in the past 
and he's disliked some things about some of them in the past as well. That's fine. We know that's a joke. But some people were like, well, if you watch the video, you get a real good understanding of what he thinks about Splatoon 3. And I'm like, no, you don't. It's a comedy video. You get a really good idea that he thinks that maybe you could, maybe, maybe, if you really, really wanted to like peel back the layers, you could argue that by, um, by him putting footage of Splatoon 1, 2, and 3 in there and not and, and never referencing it, but just using all three games, he's making a commentary on Splatoon 3 be, feeling very much like an expansion and not a sequel. You could maybe argue that. You might be right. You might be wrong about that interpretation. But you could feel that interpretation if you really, really wanted to. But you don't get... By watching that video, you don't get any sense of how he actually feels about how the gameplay or how fun it is or if it's a frustrating game or if it's a bet it's got better online than Splatoon 2. You don't get any of that because he's not doing a review, a critical review. He made a comedy video about Splatoon. In the same way that if you watched his video about comparing the Sony and Nintendo press conferences or recent the direct and the, and the state of play that's a video of like him being very excited about the action event the action show stuff coming to Sony and not excited about all of the many Nintendo uh, farm games but that he is excited about Bayonetta you know and that that's what that video is like that maybe is a commentary on the state of the games industry, but mostly it is just a comedy video that a comedian made on there. Um, I think it's 2022. I don't actually follow anyone that I would consider a video game critic. Well, there you go. And and that's my thing. I think that's fine. Video game talkers? Yeah, sure. If you want to consider Donkey a person that you like, well, Donkey plays a lot of these kind of games, so I'd like to see what Donkey thinks of this game. And you use that as like a reference on if you were going to rent that game or purchase that game or 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 you know whatever uh if you're going to skip that game wait for it to be on deep discount this took a lot of force to get on the front of this dang all right we are closing in on finishing this the finishing the fight here um i think that's totally reasonable to be like ah uh, donkey likes these kinds of games i want to see what donkey thinks about this game and i encourage you to do that but I don't necessarily encourage you to think of anyone that makes their living on YouTube or or Twitch as a critic or unless they explicitly refer to themselves as such. And I think it just saves you time, energy and effort from that because, you know, the alternative is that you just like, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, so I got into a bit of an argument with somebody about that, and it's been it's made me think a lot because I'm just like, why would you think of, like, why would you watch a comedy video and be like, well, this is what he really feels about this? They're like, do you know that, though? Like, has this person ever, like, went out of their way to, like, talk about that? Like, yeah, they, they do reviews, but, you know, like, I don't know. It, it just was like, it caught me off guard because I was like, wait, does anyone take Donkey seriously? Oh, you shouldn't. And they're like, what? What What are you talking about? If you don't like them, you don't have to watch them. I'm like, no, I like Donkey. I like the videos Donkey makes. I think Donkey is funny. I like, I like the running gag of the best video game of the year being Super Mario Brothers 2. I think that is an incredibly funny uh, uh, recurring gag. I think Donkey makes good videos. Uh, obviously, Donkey's series of uh, I'm selling out. I'm going to make a video every day. And, you know, I'm going to be doing like Among Us for Sundays or whatever and doing all that. Like, I think those videos are 90% inspired and 10% actually bad, which also fits in with the bit. Uh, you know, I think, I think you know, the drama video stuff is fun. Um, uh, and I, I think... The donkey does a good job with that, but I'm not looking at donkey for like critical analysis of video games, even when he's making it. That's not what I'm going to him for. And I don't think other people should either. I've been playing Harvest Moon One World, says Lord Crashton, which is like if Stardew was worse, but also was super chill because they don't have the same time crunch. 
uh, that Stardew Valley is based on. That's cool. I'm sorry that it's a worse Stardew, but I like that there's a time crunch. Uh, in the same way that I enjoyed Capybara Spa, which is not a clicker, or which is a clicker, but it is not a time-based clicker. It's a casual clicker. I thought it was good. Uh, Lord Crash says, I've never understood the donkey thing. So I, I have, I think I have donkey as a term blocked on Twitter, so I don't have to hear the discourse around him and whatever he does. Lord Crash did, that's also a great way to be. I will describe donkey as a person that makes comedy videos that has grown, seemingly grown out of his saying offensive things are funny, which he did many years ago, but because it's the internet exists and are easy to find. Um... But now just kind of makes weird comedy-ish videos about video game stuff and does a pretty good job of it. Um, he got known again and people outside of his own circle when he did like a stunt where he was putting a video up every day uh, and he was like selling out, um, which was interesting. Uh, and that series was good. Um, but for the most part, it just... Ignored. He's just a guy on the internet who does stuff. And you don't have to watch it or care about it if you don't want to. Um, like me. Like, if you watched my hour and a half of playing Capybara Spa, hopefully that gave you some indication of what that game is like and what it's about. And you can make the choice to watch it or not watch or uh, to pick it up or to skip it. I think that is a totally reasonable way to approach what I do. I don't write reviews. I don't consider myself to be a games critic. I'm not a wrestling critic. I'm not an anime critic. The closest thing out of all those that I am is an anime critic, and I'm not. I, I have a anime a series of videos I make about anime every two weeks, which includes analysis of, of series. I gave my recommendations on the shows that I like. I told you my issues with uh, uh, Uray Deco tonight. I don't necessarily consider myself a critic, but I, I consider myself an informed enthusiast. Same thing with wrestling. I can tell you that I think like All Out wasn't the best uh, pay-per-view AEW has done this year or ever. It's probably one of their worst outside of like Fighter Fest, which was kind of the second Fighter Fest was a snooze. But that's like, or the first Fighter Fest, I should say. Uh, but that's like it as far as like me doing quote unquote reviews of anything. And you can take everything I say with a lot of grains of salt because I'm just a person that says and thinks things. And you don't have to take anything I say seriously or at all. I'm just a guy that builds model kits and Lego sets. And puts on this panel here. We are so close to being done. We are putting this side panel on. And then we are flipping the script over here to this side panel. And I, uh, this is the part of the stream where I realize that I am missing a piece. And so we go back into our bag here. Uh, on that harvest moon, uh, some days I just wake up, check my crops, deal with it for a bit, and then go back to sleep because I literally can't do anything else. That is very chill. And also I feel that, I feel that heavily. All right, we didn't have to stay long because uh, these are the extra parts this thing came with, and I have a few of them in here, which is great. We did have two pieces that were missing in this kit because this was a used kit that was... Uh, I have now come to, to understand that my friend um, uh, Adam picked this kit up and never got around to building it, which is why there he would have known there were missing two missing pieces. But luckily, we did scrounge together parts to make up for that. They're embedded in here. You can't even see them that they're in there. You wouldn't know. Unless the fact that I told you and showed you in the booklet what the pieces were. And now this is the gas cap here. And so we're just putting that on right there. And then this is done. Uh, I guess the closest I get to Dunkey is H-Bomber Guy and his brand of wild three-hour videos about Deus Ex Human Revolution. Only to say it's an alright game at the end. Yeah, a lot to just say. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Rister Van. I do think it looks good too. I'm so disconnected from the internet discourse. I didn't know these donkey that these donkeys were a big thing or a controversial thing. I mean, it. At the end of the day, people find controversy in whatever. Um, I'm sure there are people that think that, like, I know there were some people who were like, 
he put up a, a video. He put up some videos of him like fucking around in Overwatch, and some people got really mad about that. Like him, like playing characters that aren't meta, and then some people were like, "Well, you obviously hate Overwatch," and he was like, "Well, I, I'm good at it and I play it." And like, yeah, but you clearly hate it. It's like, no, why would I play it if I hate it? Like, what? Uh, and then also he made like some comedic videos about the guy Dream, the person that cheated in the world record attempts, the speed run records, and then, but he made them uh, in a comedic manner, but people took him seriously about it, and it's a whole thing, but also maybe Donkey sucks, I don't fucking know, I just think you shouldn't take him seriously, because he's just a fucking guy that makes comedy videos, and you should only take comedy people seriously when they do dramatic roles, and they switch to drama, but you shouldn't take them seriously outside of that, that's just my opinion. Uh, we finished this fucking thing. We finished the fight, y'all. We are done with this thing. Throw this booklet over there. Get out of here, booklet. Um, we got our pop top. We've got our back opens up. The, the uh, engine bay opens up in there. Uh, we can uh, pop open our doors. We can, I guess, yeah, we can pop open these front windows. Uh, I guess I could put the bed down, but I'm not even going to worry about putting the bed down because it's, there's no easy way to open this up to futz with stuff here. Like there's no good way to like, like this isn't hard to take off. If I wanted to put the bed down, I guess I could, I guess I should put the bed down and put the table down, I guess. Although sometimes this bed breaks or this thing breaks on me, but whatever, we'll just do it like that. Careful. Great. Okay. So yeah, you can do all of this. Show that part off. So this isn't super hard to take on and off, but like also, I don't think you should because it, you know, but it isn't the easiest thing. Uh, it's YouTube. So keep people at arm's length in case it turned out. Did not say. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Mother's Basement put up a new video that I think was good looking at the flop, the, um, uh, um, Shonen Jump flops, uh, some of which were ahead of their time, other which were just bad, and a couple of which were like, how did this even start? And I thought that was really good. I think Mother's Basement does a good job. Uh, if you like Pat Bear's Anime Club and you wish that I had video clips to go along with to play underneath my voiceovers instead of just a shot of me talking with a PowerPoint, you should check out Mother's Basement. <laughs> it's sometimes more research, sometimes not as much, uh, but it also has... It does the whole YouTube thing. Like, I should... Look, I know I should do that. I should spend a bunch of fucking money uh, and have video clips for everything I talk about and write my scripts out and have an editor edit together and do all that. I'm just not going to fucking do that. I just like talking about anime uh, and having the minimal amount of bonus stuff going on in it. Um, I'm just, I'm not, that's never going to change. Uh, Lego kits that have even light transforming bits. Yes. The fact that this like is to scale with the vehicle has the pop top, which people remember and love, even if it's a fake pop top and you can't actually stand up underneath it. It's got the pop up top. Uh, it's got the, the, uh, table that folds down and the bed that, or the chair that becomes the couch thing that becomes part of the bed. It's got the whole thing. It's got all the parts. This thing is done. I am fucking done with it. I'm going to take a photo of it. Um, and then we're going to raid uh, because we've got to raid. I'm going to do this over here. Can't see that. You don't get to see that part. All right. So I'm going to take this photo here of it with everything up and open. Oh, no. This is so yellow. So yellow because of the overhead light. So we'll just do it like this. this. Yes, less yellow from that. And then we'll... We're there. We always end with a raid. You're not wrong, M. John. Not wrong. Um, Saturday stream. We will be working on... Uh, oh, I can get rid of this now. Uh, yeah, let's see. Pop this out. We were working on the Raspberry Pi case. You can see right there. I got a case there. We're going to put a fan in. We're going to put some stuff in there to make it so that it, uh, 
runs super great and uh, cool. Uh, so that's the thing we're going to start with Saturday. And then after that, uh, we're going to work on, uh, I think we'll, we'll start with Mercurius. I don't know. We could, we could do this one, but I think we're going to start with Mercurius. I, I don't know yet. I haven't decided which of the two we're going to do, but it's a two pack. So we are going to do it together. And let me just take a photo of this here. We'll do it like this. Yeah, we'll do it like this. The bus. All right, let's raid. Let's go hang out with somebody out there who's doing some cool shit on the internet that, uh, that we want to go spend some time with. Um, we're going to go find somebody. I don't know who we're going to go. We're, we're going to go hang out with, but it'll be cool. And again, uh, Saturday, working on the Raspberry Pi case. That'll be very easy. It'll be a very quick build. Um, uh, so check that out. Uh, and then we'll get into a model kit. We're going to build a model kit, which I have been just waiting on to do in, for a long time. So I'm happy to get into that. Who should we rate? Uh, who's out there doing stuff? Uh, I, they're going to wrap up. I would love, I would love to go raid, uh, my friend Ian, but I believe that they're wrapping up. Uh, we didn't get raided from, uh, Puppet Jared because I guess Puppet Jared must've started late. Uh, that's Jake. Uh, so we could raid him, but I feel like he's probably wrapping up. Let me see. When did Jared start? Let me, let me find out when old Puppet, uh, Jared started. Uh, because if he's still going, uh, no, 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 he started four hours ago. So we are, we are not rating Jared because he is definitely going to wrap up soon. Uh, so who should we rate? Sorry, everybody. I know this is compelling internet. What is I trying to buy? All right. We're going to raid, uh, Flannel Cat because we haven't raided Flannel Cat in a while. Flannel Cat is playing Phantasagoria, uh, Sorry, not Phantasmagoria. That would be fucked up. I Not fucked up, but it would be interesting. Uh, they're playing uh, Phasmophobia with other people. Um, oh, with Peace Egg, uh, who you may know from uh, a former mod for Giant Bomb, uh, Peace Egg Rules. Um, uh, and uh, uh, Nicole Goodnight, who I don't know. Uh, so we're going to go raid that because that'll be fun. I haven't seen uh, that game in a while. So let's get in there. Uh, Flannel Cat is lovely. We like Flannel Cat here, friend of the stream. So we're going to go give them a raid. So feel free to come along on this as they play, uh, Phasmophobia, uh, because it'll be fun. I hope you all come along on this raid. I hope you come back on Saturday and then, su reminder, Sunday, 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 friends. Uh, I'm going to watch wrestling and hang out and it'll be fun. So come back for that. Thanks so much for being here. Have a great night. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Goodbye.